Okay, praise God, saints. We have a few seconds before we get started here. So, if you will, prepare yourself. Get yourselves together with the purpose of saints. Getting ready to hear a word of God. Let's pray that God, the Holy Spirit, definitely you're going to let him do his job, show up, but pray that I stay in line with the Holy Spirit that I may hear him clearly, that we may be able to get the word of God to the people God in prayer. We got about one minute before this train pulls out of this station. So if you would, grab yourself your whatever your device is that you have or something to write with. Don't trust your mind to try to retain any information that God gives you because the devil is going to have the warfare in the mind to try to take it from you. seconds, guys, and we are moving forward in the Word of God. Okay, got everything lined up. We're good here. We're good here. Okay, saints, let's go before the throne of God in prayer. Again, remembering always, when you, anytime you're going into studying the Word of God, Bible study, reading the Word of God, always take a moment in prayer. Always take a moment and pray because in prayer, God is going to deliver you from the natural into the spiritual. Because when you're beginning to read the word of God, you're going from a natural realm into the spiritual realm. So you need spiritual understanding that you can hear what it is that God is saying to you. That's for you, about you. So you want to give God, give the Holy Spirit his due. So let's go before the throne of grace without further ado. Father, we honor you, bless you, and we thank you for this opportunity you have given us once again to come before the throne of grace. Now, Lord, let me say this. I am so happy and it is a pleasure for me that you allow me to speak to thy people. Wheresoever they may be, Lord, I pray, Father, that they will not find themselves bored or in any way, form or fashion, Lord God, not having their minds ready to receive thy word. Help me, Lord, that I may stay in tune with the Holy Spirit, that I may hear him clearly speak those things which he say for the purpose, for he knows exactly what each and every last one of the individuals that are listening needs. So, Lord, I pray that I remove myself from the equation. By my own free will, I take this moment and yield, Lord, my will to the Spirit of God. I give the Holy Spirit the power of attorney over the message tonight that he may speak to thy people, Lord. I pray that the people of God may do their job in removing all distractions that the enemy may not have in any way, form, or fashion his way to deal with all God with thy people. So, Lord, I pray that we continue to look to you to grow in your word. To the ones, Lord God, that are right here with us, Lord, I pray that they stay focused and in on the moment. Help them, Lord, that they may have ears sharp to hear you. To those that will be joining us shortly, Lord, I pray that you bless them, that they may get to a safe place. Then log in, Lord, where they are able to hear the word of God and go with us through the word of God. And to those that will not be here with us for whatever reason, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus that you lay it on their heart, Lord that they may view the message at a later date to find out exactly what is it that you have in it for them. Lord, with the Holy Spirit at the helm, Lord, I look forward, Lord, to allowing him to have his way and I give my voice to him freely. I give my mind to him freely. If there's anything that I have said and done that is not pleasing to thy sight or may cause, Lord God, hindrance to the Holy Spirit having his way, I repent of it, Lord. I ask you to forgive me of anything that I may have done, thought, Lord God, or said that is not pleasing with you. Lord, please. Do not in any way, form, or fashion hold thy people accountable for something that I may have done. I repent openly of it, Lord, that you may make, I may make sure that I'm in line with you, that you may speak to thy people. Now, for doing this for us, Lord, we're so careful to give your name to praise, for this is a prayer we ask the Holy Spirit to deliver to the Father, for it is both in the name and under the blood of our Lord and our Savior, for you are Jesus. You are the Christ. If you're in agreement with that prayer, saint, say Amen. And a man just saying, again, I agree. Now, once again, let me say thank you for your time that you have here. We're going to pick up what we left off in the book of Acts. Now, for every last one of you as believers that are here with me, remember, guys, always, God loves you. God cares for you. But anytime you are getting ready to deal with the word of God or the things of God, you need to have both your heart and your mind set. For the purpose of making sure the Holy Spirit can have his way. Now, you do that by cleansing your mouth, cleansing your mind, cleansing your mind in every way, form, or fashion. That if it's anything that is said or done that may have caused or um, grieved the Holy Spirit, that you may get that right. That the Holy Spirit may not in no way, form, or fashion, you may not miss anything that he has for you. Now, we last left off, guys, in Acts, uh, the 26th chapter. 
That's where we were, Exodus 26 chapter. And we was down to verse, um, actually, I'm going to go, um, it was on a few verses we got through, but we're going to touch up on them. So I'm going to go back, even as far as verse number 20, we're going to read down to verse number 23, and then we'll be able to go from there, okay? Our ever popular, what do we call it? Our slingshot effect. What is that? The slingshot effect is going back, gathering that information of last week, and then going to new information, all right? So in Acts, the 26th chapter, in verse number 20, the word of God says, But show first unto them of Damascus, and at Jerusalem, and throughout all the coast of Judea, and, uh, and, them, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works, meet for repentance. For this cause, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to the, both to small and great, saying nothing other than nothing, no other thing than those which the prophets and Moses did say shall come, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should raise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Now, what we was um, beginning to find out, and, and please give me, guys, because sometimes my mind move a lot faster than what I'm looking at, and my mind move in today's terms as opposed to biblical terms and reading the Bible. Um, just give you a note. I um, just want you to see, see here. It says, um, listen at verse number 22. It says, Heaven therefore obtained of God and continued and continued until this day, witnessing both small, witnessing both, to small and great, saying nothing other than, nothing, uh, no other thing than those which the prophets and Moses did say unto them. So again, normally in our language, we would say saying nothing, saying nothing other than instead of no other thing than. Nevertheless, that's just me, the way the mind see it. Some, well, nevertheless. So what we learned last week as we were beginning to dig into the word of God and go through Paul was beginning to speak. Remember, he's speaking to a renowned audience here. He has the king there. He has um, the head of state for Rome. Um, he has other um, leaders that are there. He has the religious leaders that are there. So he has all of these people right there in his presence. For what reason? Because he is making a, a case for himself. And they have allowed him to speak for himself. He didn't need no one to speak on his behalf. And he is talking about Jesus. And so he focuses in. He's saying to these religious people that called him and always want to beat him or kill him for heresy, if you will, or blaspheming. He is showing them via the word of God. I have not blasphemed. I'm not blaspheming at all. As a matter of fact, as you look at what I'm saying, you can see the word of God. I'm, I'm staying firm on the word of God. So quickly, we jumped on a few things here. And we said, according to verse number 22, we jumped in and was able to point out what he was going to. Again, having therefore obtained help of God, I continue um, until this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none, none other than those things which the prophets and Moses did say should come. So what was he saying? He was saying, this is already being foretold talking about this Jesus. And we backed it up saying in Isaiah 9 and 9 chapter, verse number 6 and 7, this is what the prophet Isaiah said about Jesus. He said, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government should be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and, uh, and of the increase of his government and Peace that shall, place that shall, um, shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts um, will perform it, perform this. And so what he was saying, that's what he was saying in um, Acts 26 and 22, he was backing it up with Isaiah saying, the prophets already told you this. So why are you getting upset and angry at me? Upset and angry at me because I am trying to show you or pointing out to you something that you have been proclaiming. And sometimes when a person is in their feelings or in their flesh, when you begin to say a thing through the spirit of God, or you begin to point out a thing to them, they're not going to hear you. And that's why God tells you at times, do not give that which is holy unto dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine. Now, the word of God is not calling a person a dog, nor is he saying you're a pig. 
But what he's saying is if you give something of great value to a dog, Something of great value to you, to a dog. A dog don't care. Let's say you have an heirloom of a, a, a blanket or a quilt that your great, 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 great grandmother knitted and it passed down through generations. It has great value to it, to your family heirloom, to your family as an heirloom. And what would take place is you gave that to your dog. What is your dog going to do with it? Well, he's going to take it and tear it up and lay all over it. He's going to defecate all over it. He's going to do all kinds of things to that blanket because to him, it's nothing but a bunch of uh, just a blanket. So God is saying, don't give a holy thing unto a person that do not care about the word of God. And when a person is in their flesh, you're not giving them that because they're not hearing anything that you are saying. So I submit to you as a person, um, a believer, when you see a person in that state of mind, don't say nothing. Just pray for them because they're not going to receive you in any way, form or fashion because of their anger, because of their feelings. But this is what the word of God says in verse number 23. It says, that Christ should suffer and that he should be uh, be the first first that should raise from the dead and should show light unto the people show light unto the people and to the gentiles so what he was saying with that he was saying in Isaiah and he was saying Isaiah 50 and 3 and so I'm not going to read it all but just reading a portion of it the word of God says in Isaiah 50 and 3 and this goes with Acts 26 and 23 it says who shall believe our report and to whom of the arm of the Lord is revealed? He and says, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as the root out of a dry ground. He has no form or cleanliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we shall desire him. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow, an acquaintance with grief. And we hid as if it was our face from him. He was despised and he was esteemed. We was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has bored our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did, we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we were healed. And so what we were finding out, guys, is this is what um, Paul was laying down to the people. He was saying to each and every last one of all of these leaders, and remember, he is making a play for souls right there. So can you imagine that scenery? you got the higher powers there. Now, you have in the religious realm there the, the high priest and the religious leaders. They have a lot of power. But when the high priest is standing before uh, Festus, which was the Roman over all of this, they were subjected to Festus. And you had the king that was there. They were subjected to the king. So you have a much higher power that was there before them. And they were listening that Paul lay the word down and nobody could get away. And Paul was proclaiming the word of God as if this was his last breath that he would take. So can you imagine the devil sitting there? He can do nothing about stopping what was going going down and Paul is making a play for souls he is making a play for souls he is telling them this is the Christ that we have been talking about this Jesus is that um, Messiah that you all have been looking for and you guys now that he is here and he fit all of the crit um, criteria of the Messiah you don't want to accept it because to accept him as Lord that means a lot of them had to step off the stage as Lord small L. Because when you are a religious leader, if you're not careful, people can put you in a state of deity. Some people, their pastors, they so uplift their pastors that if Jesus showed up, they would ask their pastor, can they serve him? So it's craziness that we are looking at in a religious realm. But God is saying, no, 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 that's not what it is. It's all about Jesus. So if you're looking for him so hard that he's standing right there before you, that as the, as the adage goes, I cannot see the forest because all of these big trees. And that's what you'll find a lot of people under that same state of mind. They're looking for the Messiah, but they will not listen to who God said Jesus is. And if you just hawk into who God says Jesus is, you will find out that he is the Messiah. And that Messiah has everything you need in order to make it. We touched it last week, just wanted to make it, uh, make it seem to you guys again. We were just saying, whatever it is that you're looking for, Jesus has it. I was making an analogy of the soup commercial, a progressive um, Progressive soup, I think that's what it was. So, and, and it was saying, you know, um, that's what it was with that. It's in there. It's in there. So that's what it is. Everything you need is Jesus. He's in there. And so now we're moving forward with new information. And so Paul has already laid this down. He has his audience and he's making a play for the case. 
that Jesus is the Messiah because you never know who is listening. And so again, when you have an opportunity to speak, always uplift the name of Jesus. Glorify the name of Jesus. Give him the praise, the honor, and the glory. Point to what he said, not what you think. Just say what he say, say, and leave the rest to him. He, again, he said, if he be lifted up from the earth, he will draw all men unto him. But many times we are lifting up everybody else but Jesus. And that's why you're not seeing any results. And so in verse number 24, he says, and as he, and he says, and as, and as he thus spake to him, and as he, and as he had thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, Thy art beside thyself, much learning doeth make thee mad. And so again, you're looking at it. Have you ever seen a person so passionate about a thing? It's so deep in their heart. And as they're making a play for it, people are looking at it like, man, you are crazy. Calm down. That's many times I find myself, guys. I many times find myself there. I'm so passionate and so much I want to get out that I find myself tripping and running over words. Why? Because there's so much that's going through my mind, I don't want to forget it. Because many times when I'm sitting here and talking to you guys, the Holy Spirit is feeding me. And I'm trying to take that fresh manner that he's giving me and give it to you all at the same time. And so that's what exactly what is taking place. Paul is making a plea for the souls that are right there. He understands his audience. And so he's really pleading for that souls, all of them. He has no idea. So much so that when you look at him, Festus, that is not a religious man. He is the Roman man. That's the Gentile, if you will. He's looking at this situation. And Festus is looking at this. That sounds crazy to him. But the Jewish people knew what was being said there. So again, in verse number 24, he says, And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning has made thee mad. And so that's what he's saying. When a person don't understand, you may be speaking to another person and you are pleading. The devil don't care who he can use at the moment. He just wants to stop the momentum of God reaching out to souls. Because something is taking effect right here. The word of God is going out and, and things are happening. So imagine, remember, there's a huge audience there. Everything is quiet and shell-shocked, listening to what's being said. They are mesmerized, and they are, this word is being fed. Because inside of every human, you are made up of three-part being. You are body, you are soul, and you are spirit. Now, your body is that which we see. Your soul is your mind, your emotions, and your intellect. And your spirit is life that God has put in you. Now, from the day that God has put life in us, our spirit is yearning to hear the Father. It's yearning to hear what God has to say. And so when Paul is proclaiming the word of God right there, these people are quiet because their spirits are being fed. And when the spirit is being fed, fed and the flesh is sitting here looking at this thing, flesh don't want to hear this because there's a war going on between the flesh and the spirit. And anytime the spirit is being fed, the flesh is getting weak. But when the flesh is being fed, the spirit is being weak, weakened. And so what we're looking at here, you're looking at everything. Now, these guys are looking at this. There's, um, we're talking about um, uh, King Agrippa. We are talking about Bernice. We are talking about the religious leaders. Even them, the word of God is permeating their very soul and speaking to their spirit. And so much so as this is going on, fast as I can imagine him sitting there looking at like, this is crazy. Paul, man, you don't went crazy. He said, look at what he said at the end. Much learning doeth make thee mad. What does he mean by much learning? Well, Paul was one that's constantly digging the scriptures, digging in the scriptures. And the same thing to you, the more you dig in the scriptures, the more God will reveal to you. When you dig in the scriptures, the more God will show you. But you spend no time with God in time for um, studying the word of God. So if you're not studying the word of God, how then can your mind be on him? And if your mind is not on him, how then can you be in peace? Jesus said, he that keeps his mind on me, I'll keep him in perfect peace. And then he says, peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth unto you. God says, I'm going to give you my peace. And what is this peace? He has that peace, he says, that passeth all understanding. 
So you need to understand exactly what it is that God is trying to show you. When you're studying the word of God, the Holy Spirit is going to reveal things to you. And some people just not going to see what it is the Holy Spirit is revealing. Why? Because they won't spend no time with God. They won't give him any time. They don't have time until a crisis arrives in their lives. And then when the crisis arrives in their life, then they're ready to hear from God. So I'm saying to you, are you one that is so engulfed into the word of God and you have such a passion in talking about the things of God that when you begin to hear, um, when you begin to speak about God's word, the passion is such, there are such, such joy, such glee that people can look at you and be like, wow. But the devil is always going to be around. And that's what the devil is saying. He's screaming and yelling right there, Paul. He's bringing him back to his senses. Because if you would, if you would, I would say Paul was in the zone at that time. He was just speaking the word of God there in the zone. And as he's speaking the word of God in the zone right there, the enemy jumped in with the purpose of trying to break the concentration. The spirit of God is very, very delicate, people. Very delicate. The word says the spirit is a still, small voice. So what is he saying when he says the spirit is a still small voice? You can sometimes, somebody can, you can be in worship. You can be in line with the spirit in worship and somebody bump you. That's why I tell you, when you guys, or when I'm preaching at church, I tell people, turn your phones down. If you're doing Bible study, turn your phone down. Because the devil right there, you're right on the edge and the devil does something to wake you up. Have you ever been that person you was just, you were stuck between sleep and awake, you just can't go to sleep, but you're so sleepy, and you're right there on the edge, and a phone ring, and it breaks you up all over again, and now you got to get back through this again. That's what the devil wants to do. He wants to break the word of God up, so he will not be able to reach your spirit. And so that's what he's saying. Paul's saying, um, Festus is saying, man, you're mad. But look at Paul's response. Paul says, and he says, but he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak um, speak forth the words of truth and soberness. So he said, Festus, I'm not crazy. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking the word of God with soberness. This is truth. I'm not drunk. I know exactly what I am saying. This may not make sense to you, Festus, but what I'm saying is a truth. And so sometimes people are not going to understand you. That does not mean you cower down and stop standing for the word of God because a person don't understand what it is you are talking about. And sometimes the devil will use people in every way he can. He will use their faces. As the word of God is beginning to be ministered from you, you look at their faces and they're angry. Or they have a look like... They want to do anything. The devil wants to do anything to throw you off. But you got to stay focused. Say what God say. Say do what God say do. And so that's what Paul is saying right there. Oh, no, but Festus, I am not mad. I'm not mad. What I'm saying is just truths. This is what we're standing on. This is what we believe God foremost, no, Festus. I'm not going to back down to this. It's God's word and it's true. I'll stand on this to the day I die. It is true. It is true. I know this to be true. And so that's what you're looking at. So all this is going on and everybody is listening at this spellbound and shell shock. Festus jumped in and said, man, what are you talking about? This is crazy. But Paul says, no, it's not. Look at verse number 26. He says, for the king knoweth of these things before whom I speak. Yeah, he says, but he says, but the king know of these things before whom I speak freely for I am, for I am, come back, hold on people, bear with me, look at you, I lost something, just, just bear with me everyone. Where did it go? Give me a second here. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so yeah, I don't know where it went. It just jumped. Okay, um, 26, where we at? 
Okay. Yeah, it was on the right way. There you go. Oh, wait, that one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Look at that. God's almighty. That's a multiple giant right in this one of the sea. Ray Charles can read this. 26. Let me see what we got. Okay, here we go. Okay, we got it, guys. Okay. Okay, there we go. Verse number 26. It says, For the king knoweth of these things, before whom I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. And so again, Paul, and thank you guys for sharing with us. Hey, things happen. But the point that... the uh, So things are going on. So what he's saying here is the king, he says, For the king knoweth these things. Before whom I speak freely. So what he is saying to Festus, he is saying to Festus, um, he's saying to um, Festus, the king know what I'm talking about. Remember, because because um, might want to step in here for a minute, Donna. I'm just smelling something. I'm not sure. Make sure everything is okay. Please forgive me. Okay, so it says, for the king knoweth these things of whom I speak freely. For I am I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this, for this thing was not done in a corner. And so basically what he is saying is, King Agrippa is a Jew. He is a Jew. And so, okay, so by him being a Jew, he knows our customs. He knows our laws. And that is to say, when you're talking to another Christian, there are people that are not saved. They don't know what it means when you speak about the Holy Spirit, that he may have his way and dwell through you. They're talking about what you mean, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. What is this, a scary show? Because they don't understand the vernacular which we as believers use. And so he is telling, um, Paul is telling King Agrippa, no, this thing right here is true what I am saying here. King, uh, he says, um, he telling Festus, King Agrippa know it to be true. King Agrippa, he knows our culture. And that's what he means when he says, for I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. He knows exactly what I am talking about. He have heard tell of these things before. This is nothing new to him. This is not crazy to him. And to a person that God is laying on your heart to speak to, although other people around may not know at all exactly what is going on or what you are saying, that person knows what God is hitting at in them. That person knows what God is trying to convey to them. God, they know exactly. Sometimes you won't even know. You will not even know what God is saying. You are just saying things. That's what the word says. Open your mouth and I will speak for you. You may be saying things that don't even understand that God is saying, no, I'm using you to speak to that person. But that person knows. Many times when I'm proclaiming the word of God and preaching, sometimes I don't know why God takes me in the way that he takes me. But then I begin to see people say, man, I, how did you know? How did you know that? I couldn't have known it because I did not know it. It was none of my business. But God spoke to you about it. So if God spoke to you about it, it was a tailor-made message for you. You do quickly what it is that God has told you to do. And so that's what Paul was saying. This is not hidden from King Agrippa. He says, for this thing was not done in a corner. He already knew the Jewish religion. You already knew this was coming. The word of God already told it. We read Isaiah. Isaiah told you exactly what was going to happen to him. It was already told um, what went down with it. Matter of fact, Agrippa, you knew this thing happened to beat down that he received. You knew this. This is well known. This is not something that was whispered uh, amongst um, the believers. It was well told. That's what happened when Jesus had been resurrected. When our, the disciples ran there and the tomb was open, everybody knew that he was, he's alive. He's risen. So this is not anything that's crazy. Don't you ever back down to God's word. It is not hidden because God has already spoke to the spirit of men. If nobody teach you, you know what's right or wrong. We are the ones that pollute our, um, we were the ones that pollute our souls. But the spirit of God know what truth is. Your spirit, you know when God has spoken to you. There is a time when a man is thirsty. Nothing is going to quench that thirst. No drink but water. And there's nothing worse than being thirsty and not even water can quench the thirst. I've had um, 
heard, have loved ones and have heard of people that um, struggle with diabetes. And one of the symptoms or signs they say is the person have an un, um, unquenchable thirst. So they're constantly drinking all kind of water because their thirst is not being quenched. There's nothing more frustrating than when the thirst cannot be quenched. But when you're, you're, you're taking it and your spirit is crying out and you're constantly drinking sin, there is no amount of alcohol that's going to be able to feel that spiritual cry that's in your heart. No amount of drugs, no person, nothing is going to be able to feel that, that, that spiritual quenching but the word of God. And that's what Paul is saying. This thing is not done in a corner. Is just, I'm going to say, um, Agrippa, you know exactly what is taking place. There is no way in the world. He was specific in verse number 26, talking to King Agrippa. He says, he says, um, talking to Festus about King Agrippa. King Agrippa is sitting right there. But he says, for the king knoweth of these things. He said, the king know what I'm talking about, Festus, before whom I am speaking freely. I'm standing right here and I'm telling you, and what I'm saying, you notice the king hasn't stopped me because the king know what I'm talking about is true. And then he says, for I am persuaded that none of these things, none of these things are hidden from him. So Paul is pretty much pointing, he's talking to Festus, but the king is right. He said, I know the king know these things. I know the king have heard this before. I know these things have been hid for the king. The king have people everywhere that know everything, and they bring back the report to him. The king know this. He know what I'm saying is true. And so he's sitting there, and he's making a passionate plea. This was not done in a corner. This was nowhere hidden. This right here is true. And then he looks at him, verse number 27. He says, King Agrippa. King Agrippa looking at this says, King Agrippa, believeth thou the prophets? I know thou believeth. So as he's making the plea for him, he is saying to him, he's looking at this thing. This was not hidden from the king. The king has heard of this before. The king know this. And then he's flat blank, asked the king the question. King Agrippa, all of this third person, you right here, let me address the issue. King Agrippa, believeth thou the prophets? Do you believe what the word of God says? Sometimes you got to be blunt to a person. You got a brother or sister that's going off the rails and you're talking to them about the word of God. Sometimes you have to put the word right in their face. Are you telling me the word is a lie? God say don't do it and you're doing it. Is God a liar or are you choosing to disobey him? You have to sometimes lay the onus on the person. Sometimes when you look in the mirror, the Holy Spirit call why oh you out. Three levels, one word. God says I'm talking to you. What happens? When the Holy Spirit calls you out by name. That's what he says here. King Agrippa. That right there is specific towards one person. Believe it thou the prophets. Do you believe it? Is God telling the truth or not? When you look at all the madness going on in the world. When you look at everything they're trying to flip it and change it. The question is did God lie or did he not? Which is it? If God lied. Well then you can do whatever you want to do. But if he did not lie, your job is to stand firm regardless of what the world say. If God said it's wrong, it's wrong. If God say don't do it, he mean don't do it. If God say shut up, be quiet. That's what God is telling us. So he said to King Agrippa, I know you know this. He says, point blank to King Agrippa, believe it thou the prophets. I know you believe it. I know you know the word, and I know you believe it, which then calls Agrippa right there in front of Bernice, right there in front of Festus, right there in front of the religious leaders, right in front of everybody, a whole crowd, and God has called him out. Agrippa has to answer. It says, then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou persuaded me to be a Christian. My God, man, you are so passionate about this thing. I almost became a Christian. Are you so passionate about something that you are so persuasive that when people look at you, they are willing to try it. You may go on to a um, go on vacation and you'll speak so passionate about where you went that people say, man, I got to go there. You watch the movie and you speak so passionate about the movie that people say, I got to watch this. A restaurant, you go eat and the people say, I got to go eat there. So whatever it is, but the word of God, you won't speak passionate about the word of God. So people are saying, I'm not willing to try that. Why won't you speak passionate about that? Why won't you learn the word of God and tell about what Jesus has done for you? Why won't you tell the people about how God has brought you out? Yeah, you used to be that nasty thing, whatever that nasty thing was. 
Because the Bible says such was some of you. God says you was in it too. So if God brought you out, why won't you tell the people what God has brought you out of? Why won't you tell the people what God has brought you through? Why do you have to sit on that? But yet you boast on the things of the world. God has given you a great gift of influence in speaking. But yet you do that for your job. You're the closer on your job. But when it comes to God, your mouth stays closed. Well, if a job understands enough about you to pay you for a gift that God has given you that you can be a closer to things, meaning you can sell it. You're one that sell water to whales, sell sand to people in the desert, ice cubes to Eskimos. You're constantly, you have that gift. But when it comes to the word of God, you won't sell nothing. Oh, saints, imagine what God thinks about us. So that's what he is saying right there to King Agrippa. And King Agrippa made it clear. He made it clear to him. Oh, oh, you almost got me, Paul. I almost became a Christian. And Agrippa was speaking before everybody that was there. So can you imagine what the scribes and the Pharisees were looking at? This is why we got to kill this man. He's got to die. Why? Because the devil see exactly what he is doing for kingdom. Oh, saints, dear ones, you have the gift. I can tell your testimony, but I can't tell it like you. I can tell that God delivered you, but I cannot tell it like you. So why won't you tell of the goodness of God and what he's done for you, how he brought you through, how he brought you out? Why won't you allow him to use you? You're capable. You said, I cannot speak. Oh, but did not Moses say the same thing? Oh, Lord, but I'm slow of speech. God says, that's okay. That's okay. I have someone to speak for you. Do trust me, saints. You can do this. The world is waiting to hear your testimony because someone is stuck in the same dungeon that you were in. And if God got you out, he can get them out too. Oh, Father, I thank you for the time that we have had in thy word. I thank you, Lord God, but that you have blessed us, that even in the midst of, Lord God, the hiccups and the abnormal things happening, still, you decide to speak to thy people. Oh, Father, my Father, I plead the blood of Jesus that something that was said tonight was beneficial to each and every last one of your servants, that we all heard what you had to say, that we may apply that to our lives, that we may grow according to thy law, Honor thy will, stand according to thy word, walk in your way. Oh, Father, bless the hearers that they may take the word of God and grow. Thank you, Father, for hearing this prayer. I believe by faith that you have already honored this request. For this is a prayer I ask the Holy Spirit to deliver to the Father. For it is both in the name and under the blood of our Lord and our Savior. For you are Jesus. You are the Christ. Hey, are you one out? Are you one that is out there? You have heard the word of God. And you did opposite than what Agrippa did. He said, almost you persuade me. But you will say, no, you persuaded me. The Holy Spirit had reached me. And I want to give my life to Christ. I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life. If you are one that do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you would like to know him as your Lord and Savior, I want to walk you through God's plan of salvation. But before we take another step, let me ask, is there someone that's out there that you once knew Jesus as your Lord and Savior? You walked according to his word, law, will, and way. And you were saying, I want to I want to now rededicate my life to Christ. Hey, come and hold hands with the person that never knew Christ. And let's together walk into God's salvation. Just repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this door that is open before me. I choose right now of my own free will to walk through this door of opportunity. I stand before you, Lord, in repentance, asking you, Jesus, to forgive me for the life of sin that I have been living. Forgive me, Lord, for living your life my way. I ask you, Jesus, 
I openly repent of that lifestyle and the way I've been living. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life. Sit on the throne of my heart. If you will come into my life, I will serve you, Lord, the rest of the days of my life. I make an open confession that I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord. I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, and I choose Jesus to walk by. I accept your salvation, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of Almighty God. Welcome home. If you will put that down in the comment section, we will celebrate with you for the decision that you have made. We'll believe God every step of the way. Now, you may say, now that I have gotten saved, what is it that I am to do? Well, you get in a good Bible-believing church and you learn the word of God. You grow in the word of God. You may say, well, I'm not sure about that. I don't, I don't know what's true. This is new to me. Or you may say, I'm not sure about, you know, I've been church hurt right now and I'm not sure why. I'm not, that's not, I, that's, I can't do that right now. Okay, just stay right here with us in the privacy of your own home. We can go through the word of God together. You may say, okay, then I'm willing to do that. Now you say, okay, what does it take for me? To be a part of firm foundation. Well, what I tell you is um, two questions that we ask you. One, do you believe that the Bible is the true word of God? You say, uh, yeah, I believe that. Okay, well, the next question. Are you willing to obey the rules and regulations of this ministry so as long as they line up with the word of God? Because if I tell you to do something, you have a right to ask me, well, uh, is that right? Where is that in the Bible? I will show it to you. I will show it to you. So I'm never going to ask you to do anything outside what the word of God says. You say, okay, I can do that. But then if you do those two things, we say, well, then welcome to Firm Foundation Outreach Ministry, a ministry that loves people right where they are and work with them till we can get them to what Christ wants them to be. Now, if you put that in the comment section, we will celebrate with you with that. You may say, okay, I want to come and visit you guys. Where are you located? We are located at 1851 Highway 66 South, Kernisville, North Carolina. And you may say, well, okay, then, how do I get, Google it. Google it. It will take you right there, guys. If you're getting off either um, 66 or 40, well, getting off 40, bypass or the old 40, you're on 66, going back towards High Point. Or if you're coming from High Point, which is 311, I think it is, going back towards um, uh, 40, we're, we're in that space. We're in that space. So we look forward to seeing you there. He said, but I want to support the ministry financially. Well, you can go right here to our, um, on this page, there's a QR code. We ask you. If you would, go ahead and please give. We will, everything is used for the kingdom of God's purposes. No shady business. I promise you, saints, everything is used according to God's will. And God will be pleased for how everything is used. Because pastor ain't stealing or taking nothing. So we thank God for you. We look forward to seeing you right here on this page, right here on this channel, Sunday mornings, um, Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. If you're going to be in the sanctuary, we start at 9 a.m. for Christian education. And, um... Um, Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Thank you for the time that we have had in the Word of God. We look forward to seeing you right here next week. In Jesus' name, be blessed. We love you.